Hi students, in today's lesson, we will be going through our next chapter, which is on periodic table. Uh, so this particular chapter, we have seen it in bits and pieces so far in uh, atomic structure as well as a bit of uh, chemical bonding. So after this chapter, this will really help us to wrap up our understanding on uh, these three chapters and see how it links up together. Okay, so this chapter, um, there are a few parts to it. So uh, firstly, an, an overview of what the periodic table is about. And then there will be uh, three different groups that we will look at in greater detail. So namely group one, metals, uh, group seven, halogens, as well as the group zero, noble gases. Okay, so let's start with uh, the overview first, which is the features of uh, the periodic table. So, okay, so periodic table, right, if you think about it, if you break the terminology up into two, it's periodic as well as table. Um, so from the name it suggests, right, so periodic meaning there is a certain a trend, certain arrangement, and certain order to it. Uh, and as for table, you know, when you, let's say you create a, a table on Excel or something, there's always rows and columns, right? So it suggests that there's uh, some form of a sequence over there. Okay, so to put all these uh, together, basically the periodic table is a list of elements arranged in order of increasing proton numbers. All right. So the periodic table also further divides the elements into periods as well as groups. This one you should be quite familiar. So basically, the horizontal rows that you see over here horizontally, right? Across there are periods. Okay, so period one or maybe period seven, and then uh, those that are vertical columns indicated by these kind of arrows. These are groups. Okay, and remember, group number is always in Roman numerals, right? Okay, then if you look at your periodic table, right? So um, uh, uh, right in the middle. Okay, the middle block. You will realize that. Uh, these do not fall under any groups. Okay, so these are uh, these elements. They have a special name. They are called transition metals. All right. So transition metals. Okay. So let me just uh, show you this. Uh, so if you look at this over here, this is your periodic table, right? Uh, you notice that uh, this is what I mean. You see that. Uh, over here, there's this chunk here that doesn't fall into any group. Okay, so uh, those are kind of out of your syllabus, but you do need to know uh, certain elements from over there. Uh, namely, things like, for instance, uh, the more common ones will be, say, copper, uh, zinc, as well as silver. Okay, uh, iron as well. Alright, so... Along the way, we will let you know uh, which are the ones that are more common, and you will also see them quite a bit. Uh, but as for the rest of them, you know. Them. Okay, then um, those that are over here, right? That one also know. Okay. okay, let's move on to the second part, which is on periodic trends. Um, all right, so the elements in the periodic table can be uh, classified in some way. And uh, we are also able to derive certain trends in terms of properties. Okay, so trends are things that are in general. Okay, so it can be classified based on the metallic as well as non metallic properties. So by now, you should be very familiar, right? That your periodic table you can draw this uh, staircase thing, okay, which is basically an imaginary diagonal line which will divide your metallic elements which are on the left hand side from your non-metallic elements which are on the right hand side of this staircase okay so you will realize that certain elements uh, will definitely be lying next to this line okay sitting on a staircase so these elements we also have a special name for them they are called metalloids all right so uh, these elements they because of the fact that they are uh, uh, sitting on the line Okay, they, in terms of properties, they share uh, both metallic as well as non-metallic properties. Okay, so moving on to the next part, uh, as we go from the left-hand side, okay, left-hand side of the periodic table to the right-hand side, uh, you will notice that there is some change in the properties. 
so namely there will be a decrease in the metallic properties and then an increase in the non metallic properties okay so this particular point is uh, uh, not that difficult to grasp right so as you move from left to right you go from metallic uh, more to uh, non metallic okay so yeah okay let's move on to the next part on periodic trends okay this second part is on electronic structure which we have seen uh, in uh, extens extensive details in atomic structure that chapter okay so uh, commonly we also use the term electronic configuration to refer to this and you can obtain the electronic structure of an element from its proton number okay so meaning directly from the periodic table and remember we uh, taught you this so-called trick right uh, that you can use period number to tell you the number of electron shells that an element has and then the group number will tell you the number of valence electrons okay so actually this is not a trick like it is actually uh, under this topic on periodic table okay so elements in the same group uh, they have the same number of valence electrons right so this actually helps us to predict the trend that they will therefore have similar chemical properties okay because why uh, you need to understand that for chemistry uh, when we talk about chemical reactions uh, generally we are just talking about the gaining as well as the losing of electrons okay so this will be uh, more obvious to you when you go on to uh, the subsequent topics uh, more so in secondary four all right yeah so because your valence electrons they are the outermost electrons so they are the easiest to lose and gain okay so at this moment i need you to just take a pause in this video and try this out yourself as a recap okay so here you have the elements sodium and oxygen i need you to just uh, think through what are the symbols proton number electronic configuration as well as dot and cross diagram which you should be very familiar now and then after that move on to draw the dot and cross of the corresponding ions and then finally think through how uh, you will draw the ionic compound which is sodium oxide okay when the uh, cation as well as the anion comes together it will form an ionic compound okay then uh, think about how you will draw the dot and cross diagram so take it as a, a quick recap of uh, chapter 6 which is chemical bonding okay then uh, you can resume this video and then we will go through the answers let's go through the answers so if we look at sodium we know from the periodic table that the symbol is Na proton number is 11 and uh, at this point you need to recall that uh, for atomic structure right uh, there was this relationship that we talked about that number of protons uh, is equals to number of electrons okay so uh, knowing that uh, we can deduce from the proton number 11 that sodium has 11 electrons as well and this is for sodium atom okay so then when we want to uh, put these electrons into electron shells okay configure these electrons the electronic configuration will then be 2.8.1 all right and then dot and cross diagram also same you, it's just that you reflect it in the form of a diagram that it is 2.8.1 likewise over on this side for oxygen uh, the information that you get that is that it has eight electrons for oxygen atom and the electronic configuration again is 2.6 okay so this part is uh, very easy you should be able to know very well by now let's check our answers for the dot and cross diagram portion so for sodium atom uh, when it forms an ion it forms a cat ion uh, because in order to achieve the stable octet electronic configuration you will lose that one valence electron and because electrons are negatively charged once you lose that one charge it forms any plus likewise for oxide ion okay uh, it's a bit different instead of losing you will now gain electrons gain two uh, to form o2 minus so when you draw the dot and cross diagram for ions uh, just some things to take note because you let's say for sodium you already lost the electron you need to delete away the third electron shell uh, then of course make sure that you have the square brackets as well as the corresponding uh, ionic charge 
for anions, there's uh, just something else to take note of. You need to show that the two electrons that are being gained in this case is uh, from your cation. So in this case, you need to use the symbol, which is a cross. Uh, then moving on, uh, once your okay, so once your cation and anion comes, comes together, it forms an ionic compound. And notice that actually you are just essentially copying the diagram for the ion uh, over, right? Um, but there's just one more step that you need to check, which is uh, the balancing of charges when you form ionic compounds, and especially when you're trying to deduce what is the chemical formula. So you notice that one unit of your sodium ion gives you one positive charge, and then one unit of your anion gives you two negative charges. So in this case, it's not balanced yet. So you need to put a coefficient 2 over here so that now you have two positive and two negative charges and then you can cancel very nicely. Okay, so therefore you will get the ionic compound as Na2O. So that is your final chemical formula for your ionic compound. Okay, so at this point in time, uh, based on this recap exercise, this is, uh, I would say, a rather simple summary of the chapter on atomic structure as well as chemical bonding. So if you find that at this point you are still a bit confused with uh, all that we have explained so far, uh, you would have to really revisit these two topics before we carry on. Um, otherwise, it's going to be a bit problematic. Okay, so... Yes. Okay, now let me sh uh, share with you some tips on how you can use the periodic table to help you determine uh, what are some of the common charges for your ions, uh, namely cations and anions, okay, uh, for those that are elements in the periodic table. Okay, so first and foremost, okay, once you receive your periodic table, draw in the staircase, the imaginary diagonal line, because again, like what we have just mentioned earlier in this video, uh, your diagonal line is going to be the thing that separates your metals from the non-metals in the periodic table. Okay, so yeah, so left hand side are metals, right hand side are non-metals. Okay, so um, if we have a quick look at this, right, uh, for instance, sodium, which is uh, 2.8.1, okay, so sodium we know is in group 1, so therefore it has one valence electron. So in trying to become like a noble gases, okay, it will lose this one, one valence electron to form a cation, right? Because electrons are negatively charged. So if you lose a negative charge when you are neutral, right, when you have no charge, then you become a positive charge. Okay, then uh, on the other hand, for non-metals, for instance, uh, oxygen, right? We saw that example. It will gain two electrons, gain two negative charges, thereby forming an N ion, in this case O2 minus. So therefore the trick is, okay, so group 1 elements, if you look down the group, right, all the uh, elements when they form ions, they are going to have a 1 plus charge. So for instance, Na plus, K plus, and so on and so forth. And then when you look at group 2, it will then be 2 plus. So beryllium 2 plus, magnesium 2 plus. And then uh, your group 3 will form 3 plus. Okay. Um, when we look at non-metals, on the other hand, we need to uh, look at it in the reverse format. Okay, so firstly, we have our group 0 elements, right? But uh, as we have mentioned before, group 0, they are very stable. They are unreactive. So uh, helium has the stable duplet, whereas the others, they have the stable octet electronic configuration. Okay, so we ignore them because they are the role models. Everybody wants to be like them. So if you look at group 7, let's say fluorine. Fluorine is 2.7. Uh, it needs one more electron in order to uh, be like neon, right? To have the stable octet electronic configuration. So it will form an anion of the charge 1 minus. Then oxygen will be 2 minus. And then uh, those that are in group 5, which is like nitrogen, phosphorus, it is 3 minus. So you might be wondering what happens to group 4. Okay, group 4 is a special bunch. Uh, and more importantly, carbon is uh, very special. Carbon uh, in itself is, uh, it belongs to a single field of chemistry called organic chemistry, 
which you will cover in sec four okay so at the moment you don't have to worry too much about group four elements that much uh, apart from uh, covalent bonding okay so yeah the more information about this group you will definitely see it in sec four okay so um, with this little tip that i'm giving you this will wrap up uh, this particular lesson i will see you in the next video bye